Um, welcome. Like I said, I'm so excited to have you all join us today. My name is Laura Beck, and I am with the Voyagers Conservancy, the official nonprofit partner of Voyagers National Park. We are thrilled to be co-presenting with our park partner for this month's notes from the Northwoods. Before we get started, I want to take a moment to introduce the Conservancy. We are the official nonprofit partner of Voyagers National Park. Um, and a lot of parks have nonprofit or friends groups that they uh, that help the park see beyond their limited budgets. And with our partnership with Voyagers, we help fund and manage projects and programs um, that the Park Service couldn't complete on their own. We've facilitated youth crews who do conservation projects in the park. We've collaborated on community recreation events and volunteer events. And we posted a yearly photo contest, which just opened um, for those of you who are interested in sharing your photos. And we have so many plans for this year and beyond. We are just so many good things. And Voyagers Conservancy is a community of stewards who support the park with their time and resources for projects that sustain the park. Um, if you're already part of or would like to join the Voyagers community, we would like to keep in touch. Um, if you want to sign up for our e-newsletter, visit voyagers.org, which you can see in the little corner there, um, and follow the park and the Conservancy on social media. Throughout the program today, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat and we will answer them as time allows. Now, with that, I am over the moon to be uh, turning it over to members of our park interpretive team, um, especially Maya, Re I'm sorry, Mariah Reading, um, who will share a natural history tour of the unique landscape of Voyagers National Park through painting. Woo, yay, welcome everyone. I'm so excited to be here uh, and go through kind of a landscape painting process with you. Uh, so painting and art has been a huge part of the Park Service. So although this seems like an exciting thing, um, the Park Service wouldn't be in place and look the way that it does without art. Um, and that goes all the way back to the indigenous peoples who have lived here for thousands and thousands of years. And then the start of the NPS um, wouldn't have happened had artists not you know, ventured out and documented these areas and the importance of these ever-changing landscapes. So right now we're gonna imagine that we are outside painting in plain air, which means we're painting outside and kind of capturing the moment of these ever-changing landscapes. Uh, so to do that, I have an image. Uh, this is of Rainy Lake Visitor Center uh, from kind of right behind the flagpole looking towards Shea Shea Point here and the canoe dock. Um, so we're gonna imagine we're there and this is the the landscape we're going to uh, take inspiration from. So uh, I am an impressionistic landscape painter. Um, I've done a few artists in residence in various national parks. Uh, so if any of you are following along, uh, this is my process, but you can't make art wrong, right? So we are going to go about this journey together, uh, but if you feel more inspired to use brighter colors or duller colors, or want to be hyper-realistic or a little bit more like cubist, you know, I want you to feel empowered to do so, but I'm going to be um, doing an impressionistic landscape. Uh, and you can just follow along with me. Um, so let's begin. Um, <laughs> for those of you who are joining me, um, if you want, you can throw on your smock. I'm throwing mine on now so I don't get my uniform all dirty. Uh, and then I can kind of show you my materials that I brought. Um, so I, this is my painting palette. Um, I'm just using uh, primary and secondary colors that can be found on this color wheel here, because um, you can mix all colors from that. All colors kind of originate from blue, yellow, red, and then white. So that's what I'm using today. I've got paintbrushes and water, and then a little uh, washcloth. Um, if you can use a reusable rag, that's great. So you don't have to use uh, 
wasteful paper towels. That's awesome. And then I, this is my canvas that I'm painting from. So if you have a white piece of paper, that's awesome. If you have a canvas board, that's awesome as well. What I like to do before I start a painting is to look at what I'm painting. So this area, kind of squint my eyes and see what is the majority of colors that I'm about to paint. So squint your eyes, what is the majority of colors? Like blues and greens, right? So this is the color wheel, handy dandy tool. So I lay a ground, which is like a base color uh, of my paintings, every painting that I do, that's the opposite color of what the majority of colors I'm about to paint is. Because what we're about to do is two dimensional and we're about to paint a two dimensional 3D world, right? So in order to do that, I lay a, the opposite color down below because then it will poke through the paints and kind of ignite it. Having oranges next to blues is like this powerful visual tool that makes these landscapes sparkly and have motion to them. Uh, and these, these landscapes are never still, right? This photo is stagnant. Um, I took this yesterday and it looks completely different today. It's gonna look so, so different in, you know, a year or 50 years or you know just a month from now um so that's another really important thing of like duty of us as artists is to capture these landscapes these fleeting moments so that it's like a historical document so we can use that in the future to come awesome so we're gonna get started <laughs> uh so the first way I paint the landscapes, how we see the landscapes. So the first thing that we paint is the farthest thing in the distance. Um, so guess, place your guesses what the farthest thing is. Um, even farther than this strip of land here lies the clouds, right? So we're going to lay that on first. Um, so I am just going to go for it. Got my painting palette here. Um, I'm probably just going to do kind of like a whitewashed little color and paint in the line of the horizon. Do, do, do. Cool. And the rule of thirds is that, you know, it's a more interesting and kind of dynamic painting if uh, there's like kind of three sections to it. So it's not that the horizon line doesn't necessarily want to be exactly in the middle of the painting. It's kind of more interesting if it's broken into thirds. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint in the sky because that's behind everything. We kind of had a bright blue day yesterday, but again, you know, outside it's kind of cloudy today. And I want you to notice how um, the colors change, right? The sky isn't just blue. It starts lighter blue down below, right? So we're going to paint a little bit of white and then kind of have it expand into that darker blue color up above. So I like to have a warm blue um, and a cool blue. So I kind of mix the two of those together and then kind of add some color up top. And notice too that I'm starting with a thicker brush so I'm starting, I like to start paintings with more general brush strokes. We're just kind of getting in the, the base of this landscape now, right? Uh, no need for details. We're just getting the essence of the place. Um, and also when I'm painting outside in plein air, I like to call them color studies because we're just trying to capture um, these fleeting moments. Like I was saying, uh, I, I think it's easy to get uh, frustrated that, oh, this doesn't look exactly like the, the, you know, every little detail, but it's, that's okay. You're just capturing the essence, how you felt while you were there. So I'm kind of painting that in, and then I might add some general white strokes to where the clouds are. But again, just kind of capturing in some general colors. Do, do, do. And see kind of how the red is poking through a little bit. I think that that also makes it a little bit more dynamic of a landscape. Um, having white behind can sometimes make it feel a little still. So just adding some general colors, noticing how this cloud swoop, there's a lot to notice. Do, do, do. Cool. 
So that's that. Um, we'll go back and add some more details from then on. Uh, but now we're going to paint the next thing on the landscape. So that's kind of this strip of land here. We've got Shea Shea Point here in northern Minnesota. It's super flat. Uh, and that's because um, we have an extreme geologic history here, which is really, really cool. So way, way back in the day, um, all of these volcanoes erupted and uplifted the ground. So we kind of had huge mountains and everything like that. And then over time, over time, glaciers came through and scooped this landscape right out. Um, so that's why we have some of the oldest rocks in the park here at 2.8 billion years old. They are some of the oldest rocks that can be found in North America. We have them here. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a flat topography, but it's been through so, so much. So we're going to paint that right now. So I'm going to take some blue and also notice, so these trees are probably the same oaks and willows that we have here, but it's, it might be hard to tell, but do they seem like the same color? Uh, they're, <laughs> they're actually, they're a little bit lighter, a little bit more muted. So things in the distance tend to be more muted than things right up close in your face. And that's called atmospheric perspective. So if you've ever been to a mountain range and seen kind of this huge progression of mountains, the mountains farthest in the distance are like this light dusty blue. And, and they get darker blue and darker blue and get more vivid and rich as they become closer to your eyes. So that is called atmospheric perspective. So you don't want this strip in the back to be the exact same colors as the colors up front, uh, because then it'll appear more two dimensional, right? We want to, to show that perspective and that change. So I'm gonna mix kind of this green color. I might add a little bit of red um, to mute it out. So if you mix complementary colors with each other, they form neutrals. Um, so I kind of am mixing some colors together. You can add a little white uh, so it's a little bit more dull, that kind of dull coloration. And then I'm going to go in and paint the general shape. Now the tip of the brush so you can kind of get those treetops. But again, I'm just getting shapes in here right now. Boop, boop, boop. Awesome. And there's a few different colors, right? Because the land back there isn't necessarily just one solid color of green. There's all these different types of trees. So we are painting this geologic history right now. Ooh, so cool. Okay. All right, so that's good for now. It's okay if it's a little chunky because again, we're going to paint over it. Um, so now we're moving on to the middle ground. So that was called the background of the painting, the thing that's farthest in the distance. We're going to move to the middle ground. So look to our landscape. What is the thing that is in the middle of the painting? It's water, lots of water. <laughs> We're a water-based park. 40% of this park is water. And um, I really love thinking about it. Um, you know, a lot of times you learn uh, that U-shaped valleys um, are the signs of glaciers. And from above the water, you can't really tell that, um, you know, these lands were potentially carved by glaciers because it's hard to find those valleys. But in the park, in certain sections of the lakes, um, the major lakes that we have in the park, the water can get up to 150, between 150 and 200 feet deep. So underwater that U-shaped valley is formed. So underwater, you can see all of that evidence of the glaciers coming through and carving these landscapes. Um, and then about 10,000 years ago, uh, the, the glaciers started to recede and melt. So they deposited their water, um, the, the glacial melt into these lakes. They became Rainy Lake, um, they became Cabotogama Lake. And um, 
they also did that with the interior lakes, right? We have a lot of interior lakes and it looks like something came through and scraped it and then melted away. Um, so that's kind of evidence um, of our waters, these, these melted out glaciers, uh, which I love so much. Um, yeah, so now we're gonna paint in the, the water. Um, and yeah, I want you to notice the different colors of water. Water is tricky to paint sometimes. I think a lot of people get overwhelmed. Um, it is, again, a constantly moving thing. You're never looking at water unless it's winter and frozen, which it definitely can be. Um, and uh, yeah, so you, you, there's, there's so, so many colors, right? Even the strip here, that's like a, a total gradation of different colors. It's kind of darker here and turns white because um, it's the reflection of the clouds there. So I'm going to kind of mix uh, this little like tealish blue color. Might add a little bit more red. Doo, doo, doo. And the cool thing about painting is if you don't like what you painted or it didn't turn out to be the right color, you can just paint over it. Acrylic paints are what I'm using and they're, they dry super fast. So it's pretty nice. You can kind of do one of these. Uh, so I'm just going to paint over this color. And similarly to the sky, the faint, the water in the farthest distance is going to be a little bit more muted, a little bit maybe lighter, whiter. Um, yes, yeah, so maybe that's more fitting. That kind of color. We make it brighter as it comes towards us. It's got these large swaths of color. I like to mix my paints directly on the canvas, but some people feel more comfortable kind of mixing the exact color that they want on their palette. And again, that's your artist uh, preference. Totally up to you. And then down below here, is that even blue? <laughs> Now it's kind of like this purpley gray um, brownish color. Uh, so again, remember what I told you about mixing complementary colors together to form uh, more neutrals. So I'm probably going to make like a purple, some kind of purple color, maybe add some yellow to it. You just kind of go with the flow, start mixing colors and see where it takes you. And maybe add some blue there. And then paint that in. And notice too that I am painting in the direction of what it is that I'm painting. So the water is kind of forming, you know, ripples in this way, and then they kind of level out. So I'm painting the strokes in the way that the water is moving. Um, so that's a fun little, fun little trick. And then you're just kind of adding in colors, adding in that base. And then that color is kind of repeated up there as well. So I definitely hop around. <laughs> if you couldn't tell when I paint, I you know do a little here, do a little there, um, kind of hop, hop, hop around. And uh, that, that works for me and my personality and my painting style, but I know painters that start in one corner and just make it perfect, 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 and just kind of trickle on down. So again, I'm sharing my perspective, but if this doesn't jive with you, then feel empowered to kind of take it the direction that you want. Okay, so that's kind of the foreground and the middle ground. And I think right now what I'm going to do is go back and paint some of these clouds. Um, so now that they've, the base layer has dried, I'm gonna go back and paint um, some more of the details. Uh, so I'm grabbing a little bit tinier of a brush uh, and then I'm gonna go through and add those details. So right at the horizon, it's kind of that light blue color, right? So we can add that in. You can add some dashes. So you can see, you know, where the trees are. It's just not a straight line. There's, there's a uh, dynamic trees back there. So again, the clouds are kind of going from side to side. So I'm painting 
up and down and then side to side like so. Happy little clouds. <laughs> oh, yay. And the thing with clouds and trees, at least that I've come to realize, is, you know, again, they're constantly moving in motion. So, you know, you want to do your best to capture what you actually see, but it's it's kind of a nice freeing thing to realize that, you know, if I don't get this exact cloud perfectly right, it's okay. It's okay. You're just trying to capture, you know, uh, the, the generalities, right? So you can kind of remember what this place was like when you visited. I love painting in parks whenever I go. Um, I feel like so often when I visit places, I or before I started painting in places, I would just rush in, you know, get the picture, rush out. And, you know, photography is a form of art as well, but I think taking mindful time to paint in the park and create art in the park uh, is gonna add to your memory and add to your, um, your love of a place. Uh, you're gonna notice different colors that you wouldn't notice had you just rushed in and rushed out. It kind of gives you that, that meditative time um, to sit still with a place uh, that you care for. All right, so I'm just adding in some, there's kind of like little splotches, little dots along here. You can add those in, some dashes. Doo, doo, doo. It's all about the layers, layer it up. <laughs> Are we doing okay then i'm gonna fill this area in i might get a little bit bigger of a brush and fill this in so it's a little bit darker and more clear use this blue the cool blue and the light blue mixed together so the cool blue is this one which has a little green added to it and then the warm blue is that one that has a little red to it And I might even add a little bit of red so it looks like Crayola, a little bit less, you know, right out of the two paints. You want it, um, nature doesn't always uh, look exactly like, you know, freshly squeezed paints. There's always intricacies behind it. So I think adding some colors um, that you might not necessarily think <laughs> belong there make it that kind of interesting and dynamic color scape. Okay, so we got some clouds kind of going like that. Do, do, do. Add some white again as we're heading farther below. Mm -hmm. Find that thing up there. So yeah, just kind of capturing, capture that essence. That kind of a big one there. Okay, then I'm going on top again to do these clouds because these clouds are lying on top of the blue sky. Doing our best. Uh, another handy trick too, um, you know, I am trying to embody landscape painting outside, uh, but a, a good thing to keep in mind is when you're outside looking at a landscape and painting it, you want to be looking at the thing that you're painting more than your actual painting, because our brain, uh, develop symbols for things. So like for clouds, oh, clouds should look, you know, curvy at the top and straight at the bottom. That's kind of what our mind is telling us, but that's not necessarily what we see. Um, so it's important to be looking at the, what you're drawing, what you're painting more uh, than the painting itself. Uh, it's tricky. It's hard. You kind of got to trust, but um, 
but it's a definitely, it's an important technique. So it's easy for our mind to play tricks on us. Clouds look different than what we think they look like. Just kind of add in some colors. Okay, and also to kind of stand back and look forward and stand back and look forward, see how that's kind of working together. That looks all right, okay. We can always go back and add more details. Um, rinsing off the brush now, and now we're gonna go in to those trees again. Get that foreground, that uh, background looking good. Add some fun colors. If you want, um, it's good to have perspective and scale in landscapes. Uh, so I like to have just kind of plain landscapes, but you know, Shea Shea Lodge is back there. There's motorboats that come through this land all the time. So if you want to add scale to your landscape, uh, feel free to add that. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of go in and also notice how the base of the landscape is a little bit darker. Uh, it's hard to see, I know, but imagine. All right. So a little bit darker. And it doesn't really matter if it's bumpy at the bottom because we're going to clean that up. And then this is an important part. We're going to add the trees on top of the sky, right? So we're going to extend them so they go over the sky because that's how they really go. Over the sky. Maybe add some brighter yellows in there. Just a little bit. And then it does grow a little bit on that side. Looks like that is maybe an island poking out. You can add that. All right, I'm add a little bit more darkness at the bottom so it's more of a visual base. We don't want to have floating islands out there. A little bit more of a base to it. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we've added our colors in to the background and a little bit in the middle ground. Uh, but now we're gonna start adding things that are closer to our eyes as we're standing, looking out at this landscape. So we've got this point uh, by one of the canoe docks down below here. Um, we've got some oak trees, uh, some pine trees. I did a little sketch yesterday. So sometimes sketching helps people. Um, you can kind of zoom in. There's some spruce, um, some cattails. Uh, so we're gonna add this little chunk of land first. Um, so again, those are the similar composition of trees to uh, the trees in the distance. But look at the coloration, like how different is that? Um, compared to the coloration in the background. It's pretty, pretty significant. Um, so we're going to add the base again, which is that dark color. The best way that I like to add darks is this blue, this dark blue and some red. So it's kind of like this deep plum purple. I don't like to use black because black is really unnatural. Um, if you think something's black, it's usually a different color. It's usually like a dark forest green or, you know, that I see, I see plum there, I don't know. Um, okay, so I'm gonna add in this little jetty thing here. It needs a little bit of yellow, it's too, it's too plum. So I'm gonna add that in. Do, do, do. And then, we're just going to go up from there. And add some of those spruce trees and willow trees. We've got a willow right there. We've got a lot of trees in Voyagers National Park. Um, a lot of trees that uh, 
the birds and the animals love. Got some loon friends who live out here. <laughs> so we're gonna add, and notice too that I've been mostly focusing on dark colors. So when I'm painting, I like to lay my dark colors first and add those little like highlights of bright colors on top. Um, okay, so we kind of got that base there. It's a little bit of a shadow. And then we're gonna add some greens on top, but maybe I'll do that in a minute. Uh, right now, we're gonna paint this big patch of cattails. Uh, so cattails are a big problem in Voyagers. Um, we have this hybrid of native cattails and non-native cattails that are kind of taking over the landscape. Um, so we, we have a lot of specialists who are out there trying to mitigate um, you know, their impact as they float around the park uh, and kind of take over the other native plants. Uh, but again, you know, that's kind of like the, not, not the greatest story, um, not the like most positive story, but it is a moment in time. It's where we are right now in the park. We're dealing with this hybrid of cattails, right? This um, invasive cattails. So as artists, we're creating this piece that, you know, maybe in 50 years, um, if we all are stewards of the landscape, uh, these cattails could be mitigated and we can look back and see, wow, like look how much we've improved, um, you know, those side-by-side -side photographs of land. Um, the same thing goes for, for art. It can be used as a tool to show how much progress we've made. So we're gonna add those, those cattails on in because um, they, they do play a role in the park, whether good or bad. Um, so it's kind of this patch. So I'm just gonna go ahead add some like general strokes in. You don't have to, you know, get like a one wire uh, paintbrush and add all of them in one by one by one. Uh, you, you can kind of just add the color. When you squint, you just kind of see a color, a mass of green. So that's what we're adding now. Just this kind of mass of green. Going up and down because that's the way the cattails are configured, right? They go up and they go down. And I'm just kind of mixing colors willy-nilly going for it. There's a lot of different greens, a lot of different yellows in there. So I'm gonna add that. I do that side thing to get the, the paint off of the, um, the side of the brush, just kind of sweep it like that. Adding in those cattails. All right, so we kind of got the general shape of them. Now I'm going to go back to these trees here now that the base has kind of uh, dried a little bit. I'm going to get a nice dark green going in there because most of the greens are pretty dark greens. So we'll add some dark. Green. And then the highlights are the fun part at the end. So we've got kind of this tree here. It's going to be a little more blue. It's troubleshooting. You're just going for it. Uh, and then take, you know, take the paintbrush the direction that the trees are going. Kind of going up and down and all around. Kind of going these little pockets there. Pockets. And then we've got one tree down at the bottom there. And add little dots and dashes. Whatever you want. Okay. Cool. And then you can mix like this yellow color. Add those highlights. That's probably my favorite part, kind of seeing how those highlights come together. And notice too, we're, we're spending more time uh, on things as they get closer to, to our nose. Okay, and then you can get some of those yellow colors. 
bright spring yellow. Add just a few dots and dashes. All right. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So now we're going to go back to these cattails. Uh, so cattails, we see them as green, but what are all these little colors underneath? They're kind of that, the return of that plum color. So I'm going to go back to that plum and add that underneath. So again, it has a base. They're not I mean, they are floating cattails sometimes, but they're gonna, they're strung to something. So we're gonna draw, paint that on in. And then hopefully, if you return to Rainy Lake Visitor Center uh, in a decade or something, they'll be gone. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna add some bases and kind of add that negative space. So the, the space between the cattails is just as important as painting the cattails themselves. So we're kind of adding that dimension to them. And again, just like have fun with it. This part is a little bit free and you can kind of just, just go for it. Cattails, cattails, more cattails. Okay, so that's kind of the base there. It's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to add some shadows. There. Okay. So again, we can come back to it. But the last thing, you know, the farthest thing, the thing that's closest to us are these rocks here, right? So they're gonna be the sharpest, the most, um, you know, they're closest to our nose. Uh, and these rocks, again, are kind of a view into the history of this park. Um, our geologist uh, took a look at these rocks and we've got um, some of the darker colors are most likely metamorphosed basalt. So those are from that volcanic eruption that I talked to all the way at the beginning of this program. Um, so they've been metamorphosed. Uh, so those are some of the darker colors. And then some of the lighter colors are metamorphosed granite. Um, so basalt forms like kind of instantaneously, really quick from a volcanic eruption. And then granite forms more slowly and slowly. So usually when glaciers come through, um, granite is like the, the hardest, one of the harder rocks um, that gets left behind. So we have a lot of granite in the park because of that. Um, so those are the rocks here and you can actually see some parallel lines running uh, through the rocks. You know, you're just looking at uh, it's just a pile of rocks, uh, but there's so much history there. You can see, you know, how the extreme, extreme force that it took to uplift these rocks and twist them and mush them together. Um, so these parallel lines show that extreme pressure and extreme power um, that this land has had uh, again. 2.8 billion year old rocks, wild. So we're gonna paint those in right now, woohoo. Uh, so again, I like to start with those dark colors. It's kind of like a dark gray, brown-ish thing. You know, on first glance, when you're looking at these rocks, you're like, ah, they're black rocks. No, no, so much color in them. <laughs> Add the color. All right, so I'm gonna, just kind of chunk them in, you know, get those. Oh, and it's a similar color to that. Maybe because it's reflecting, ha ha ha. Um, so just chunk it in. 
add these kind of street colors, maybe I'll add it, make it a little bit brighter. Okay, if they're not the exact shapes that you're looking for, because there's no such thing as an exact shape of a rock. They're all different. And that is cool. Okay, so we kind of got this one poking out here. And then another one in. So we're just laying some shapes down. It's kind of all it is to painting. We're just painting tones and shapes. All right, so we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'm like that. Okay, so it's kind of the generalized area of the park. I think I'm gonna go in and add some highlights to the water here now as we wait for those to dry and then we can add more details later. But again, uh, you know, it's the same same body of water, right? But this dramatically looks different and you can see the ripples. And sometimes, you know, you can see the little highlights added um, from the sun cascading onto the water. You can see those little twinkles. Um, so we're gonna add those. We're adding lighter colors now. Okay. So this is kind of like a nice gray color. Put it in there. And just like little dashes, right? Just a bunch of little ripples over each other. The water's constantly moving. So again, it's okay if you don't get that exact ripple perfectly placed. It's not the point. <laughs> no, we're just going for it. We're just having fun painting in the park. All right. Maybe I'll add some ripples back here. Add some that are like a whiter, bluer color. And this is the fun part where you can take some artistic liberties too. So if you're like, ah, you know, I don't really want to paint that color, that muddy color there. I want to add some blue to it. Do it. It's your painting. You can do whatever you want. So maybe I'll add some little highlights there. Some highlights here. Just little dashes. All right. Okay. Cool. It's turning out all right. We're doing okay. <laughs> Probably going to add some blues in here just for fun. So we're having fun. And then see how the blues kind of go into the negative space there. So maybe I'll do the same. Kind of bring them up, bring them down. Okay. So again, you know. Time frame wise, I would say the last 10% of a painting takes 90% of the time. Uh, so this was an hour class and we're just kind of busting through. Um, but those, those fine details at the very end, you could be like, oh, I'm almost done. Why is this taking so long? Those last little details to kind of push everything together at least for me, is always what takes the longest. So give yourself a break. Add in those highlights I'm starting to add more of. 
um, kind of bring every bring that make this make the landscape sparkle. Uh, add in the light to it. I'm focusing on a lot of dark colors, so we're going to add in the light. Make it sparkle. I like to add water a lot of the times to my paintings as well. That kind of makes it more of a wash so you can layer, layer, layer. Um, and kind of see what's beneath it. You know, you can get in with an even teeny tinier brush in there if you want to and get those little nooks and crannies. Uh, again, I'm not focused too, too much on details. I just kind of want the general movement and essence of the place. Where we got going? Okay, cool. So we'll go back to these rocks. We have the dark basalt kind of color, but we can add in some, uh, some of the, the lighter granite colors too, right? And again, this, although it looks white, it looks bright. Is it really white? No, no, there's a bunch of different colors in there. It's almost like a gray, sometimes granite uh, can be pink almost. So although we see it as white, there's all these colors embedded into it. Um, so I might make it a little bit of this like bluish, purplish color, because who doesn't like purple rocks? Um, okay, so we're looking kind of at this one. I'm gonna go that. Give it a little rocky shape. Again, I'm not like focused on, okay, this rock has to be perfect, this rock has to be perfect. Just kind of looking at the shapes and the lines that these different rocks make. I'm just kind of adding in dots and dashes. Dots and dashes are cool. If you want to, you can try to get these, that parallel line work. That's for um, probably after hours <laughs> of this class. But, but yeah, you can really get in there. Uh, I also really want to point out um, right here, we've got a raspberry bush and that is a native plant. So it's kind of this ongoing story of we've got the invasive plants next to the native plants and kind of what that relationship is in the park right now uh, at the end of June in 2021. Uh, so we can add some more colors here. Just start adding rainbows. We've got some kind of twig like things, so we can add those in. Add some rocks. I like to always constantly mix because uh, no rock is exactly the same. No rock looks the same as another one. So we're just going to kind of always be mixing and editing the color. So it's a little different here, a little different there. And that works. Cool. Um, let's see. All right, I might take some of this color that I created and to make the paint in cohesive, I like to reuse and overuse, um, you know, so the plums over here, the plums over here and the, the highlights over here are integrated within the cattails there. Um, that kind of makes it uh, a nice cohesive and uh, aesthetically pleasing piece because it all kind of goes together. So I'm gonna add the highlights of the cattails now. They gotta be lighter, they gotta be lighter. Kind of got those bottoms, the top there. Okay, cool. I might even get, I got a super teeny brush. Maybe I'll go in 
in the last little chunk of time that we have to add those little smidgens of detail. And even up here, maybe this needs a little, little bit of that. And then we've got the dock there. If you feel like adding the dock to it, you can do that. I'll go through and do that yellow color. So now it's just, you know, you're just adding all the details you can find. So I focus, like I mentioned, I focus on uh, the natural landscape, but if you are more inclined to paint um, wildlife, you know, you can add a loon in there. We saw some painted turtle holes over there uh, last week. So you can add some painted turtle friends in there. Um, there's so, so many options. So let's add a little bit of these raspberries that highlight just to show they're there. And like I said too, this is a color study. So, you know, it's really easy to be critical of um, your work. And I think that it's just, it's about, it's about the journey. It's about the process of creating and noticing uh, things that you wouldn't notice normally. Um, I love my, um, my first drawing, my first art class that I took in college, my professor told me my job isn't uh, to teach you how to draw exactly what you see. My job is to teach you how to see the world in a new way. So I hope that, you know, these tools can allow you, you to see the world in a new way um, and notice, oh my gosh, look at that kind of orangey purple rock as opposed to like, oh, look at that black rock over there, right? There's so many things that we can see uh, in new ways. Add some details there. Add in those details. So now I'm just kind of hopping all over the place being like, what does it need? It needs more time, I need more time. <laughs> it's pretty amazing how fast time goes by when you're painting or like really immersed in something. I love it. Sometimes I'm painting outside and like, four hours have passed. You know, you barely scrape the surface of all that the landscape entails. Um, it just goes to show you how dynamic these spaces are. Add some of this, raspberries. Some of this color. All right. So yeah, you know, we're doing it. It's an ongoing process. And a lot of the times too, paintings aren't finished uh, when you, you know, put your last paint dab on the canvas. A lot of the times I sit with paintings for months and months and months. I paint it, I, you know, don't fully feel it. And then one day I'm like, ooh, you know what this one needs? Boop, 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 right here, this over there. Uh, so, so give yourself that time and flexibility for sure. Uh, but I think at this time we're kind of, we're kind of wrapping up. Um, so this is what I have after an hour of painting with y'all. Um, just a fun, fun flirty sketch. Uh, and what I like to do, so I don't know if you noticed, but I kind of taped the perimeter of the landscape um, so we can take that off and then it kind of looks professional and fun. So I'll show you what I've got. It's got a little bit of a border that way. And 
Okay. All right, so that's the painting. So it looks a little bit more professional. There's the, there's the inspiration and there's the, the landscape painting. Um, don't forget to sign it. Uh, no name, no fame. So sign that. Um, I like to do my little initials here. Oh, and then the date. So I'll probably do 2021 or just 21. Uh, so now I know that this is the Rainy Lake Visitor Center as it was on this date, uh, on this year. And who knows how it'll look differently uh, in years to come. But, you know, I hope that this class showed you that you are, you know, you should be empowered to create and it's like an essential tool uh, to maintain these landscapes and to be stewards of these landscapes. Uh, so if y'all created art along with me throughout this uh, class, or if you feel inspired to later, please email me. This is my email. Email me. Uh, we could feature you potentially on our website. Um, upload your pictures to the Facebook page. Uh, and, you know, kind of, we can be a part of this collective art community. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, happy painting. Woo! <laughs>